Today we're visiting Old Beaupre Castle. Let us not fool ourselves, Old Beaupre Castle is not a castle. Yes, it is fortified, but this is more of an afterthought than the primary reason for building it. Essentially, it is an L-shaped manor house which had a gatehouse and outer defensive wall added, creating an inner court. This makes it a fortified manor house. The original building dates from around 1300, although not much of this remains, as it was extensively remodelled in the 16th century. This includes the creation of an impressive gatehouse. Subsequent additions include a three-storied Renaissance porch, completed in 1600, as well as additional buildings around the inner court. As a result, it is a mishmash of styles, but an interesting building nonetheless. It was owned by the Bassett family until the beginning of the 18th century, at which point it passed via inheritance to the Jones family. The Jones family weren't overly enamoured with Old Beaupre and instead chose to live at the mansion at New Beaupre. So we're at Old Beaupre Castle, well you say castle, it's really a fortified manor house but I guess when it's fortified you can call it what you like. And it is slap bang in the middle of a field and it's a really pretty field. You've got a nice babbling river nearby, you can just about hear and Tweety Bird. And there's this manor house sitting in the landscape looking out over it all. If you want to make a statement to your neighbours and anybody who's popping round for tea, why not have your coat of arms in stone above the front door of your house? Because that's what this is here. This is the Bassett coat of arms and when you come round and that's the first thing you see, then you go, ooh, I bet people like here. These people have got some wealth, they've got some power. They've got their own coat of arms in stone. So when you come in through the front door, the first thing that you're confronted with is this Renaissance style building here. And it has again got its own coat of arms on it. And written in Welsh is the family motto, which translates to roughly death before dishonour, which sounds strangely like something that somebody would say in Fifth Element or a Klingon. But there you go, there it is in stone. And apparently there is a misspelling in it as well. So. I don't know whether the stonemason did that on purpose or he did it and went, well, it's going to be up high, nobody will see it. But it is an impressive thing to see and it's completely out of keeping with everything else around it, so it sticks out like a sore thumb. Another impressive statement of power and wealth designed to intimidate your neighbours, who they really didn't want stealing their stuff on the front door of the Renaissance porch. You've got these lovely little Celtic knotwork etchings and you've got a bull and a flower of some sort. I'm guessing it's symbolic for something, but I'm not sure what. You've also got the usual grotesques that you find on churches and castles and things like that. As you come into the Renaissance porch, you've got these facings on the front so you can see what it would have looked like before most of it fell off. Bit of a shame, really, that there's not much of it left. So I'm currently in what would have been the manor house before they added all the fortifications to it. The whole reason they put all the fortifications on was because of the fact that they didn't get on particularly well with their neighbours who were stealing stuff and being a general nuisance. And so what was probably at one time quite a nice house just to live in suddenly had to have security all over the place in much the same way that we stick up security cameras and tall fences and those funny spiky things at the top of fences and walls and what have you. Now their version of the spiky thing at the top of the wall is of course somebody standing there with a bow and arrow going pachoon, pachoon, because that is the international noise of a bow and arrow as I'm sure you will agree. Not sure what was back here, but there's a brick wall further back. It's too dark to make out any details though. It looks like the library's closed today. They've got some scaffolding up. So I'll just have to show you some footage from when we last came, so you know what it looks like. This really would have been quite posh. You've got a cellar on this floor. And then above, we've got lots of fireplaces, lots of windows with really quite nice stone carvings around them. 
This would have been obviously the main living area and it would have been swish. They have this walkway that you can walk out over the bridge and round the side of the courtyard and then look right out over the fields to see the land that they have. It's not a bad defensive position in that you can see a very long way and everything inside and outside the castle, but mostly it seems to be just a nice spot for having an amble around and seeing what's going on around you. It must have been nice to be able to take a stroll around your property inside and see everything that was happening. I like it here, I think it's, it's just nuts. <laughs> There's just so many things that kind of mishmash together and you think, okay, right, yeah, I can kind of see what you're going for. Somewhere here, and I don't know whether it's in this bit or in the house next door, which isn't open to the public, but somewhere there is a secret door in an Inglenook fireplace that leads to a vaulted room. And I just love the idea that of that and really haven't been able to find it. We, well, might, we might be coming back until we, we do. We could be coming back a lot. We could be, you so, never know. So you still like it then, having oh, come yeah. back a second time? I do, I think it's great. It's one of those places that's not really on its way to anywhere, It's just it just is <laughs> on yeah. its own in the middle of a farm. If you're going to walk out to here, there's nowhere that you're going to go, right, I'm going to go to Obog Puri and then go on to the next thing. You it's never know. here and back. <laughs> could be. Could be. I've spoken to somebody else who said there's nowhere to go from it, so... I feel vindicated in saying it. <laughs> yes. Yi, who is, who is well known for her incredible sense of direction. <laughs> oh, shush. <laughs> See you next time. TTFN.